In these problems, we have some complicated looking logarithmic equations, and we're supposed to solve for x. The general approach here would be to try to get your logs on one side of the equation and then combine them into one logarithmic expression. And then once you do that, you can write the whole thing as an equation and try to solve for x. Let's look at how this works in this first one. I have negative log base 3 of x plus 6 equals 2 minus log base 3 of x minus 2. What I can do is move this over here by adding log base 3 of x minus 2 to both sides of the equation. So I'm adding it here. I'm also going to add it here. When I do that, I will get the log base 3 of x minus 2 minus the log base 3 of x plus 6 equals 2. So now we've got all our logs on one side of the equation. And I notice what I have here is a, a difference of logs. So there's one log minus another log. And a difference of logs, we can use the properties of logs to rewrite this as a log of a quotient. So this is really the log base 3 of x minus 2 over x plus 6. So we use the property of logs there, the difference quotient property, uh, to write this as one logarithmic expression. So this equals 2. At this point, we can probably convert this to an equation. What the log base 3 of some quantity equals 2 means is that you take this base, you put it to this power, and you get this. So our equation would be 3 to the second power equals x minus 2 over x plus 6. So this over here is really 9. Get rid of that 3. And if we want to solve for x, we can multiply both sides by x plus 6. And over here, that'll cancel, getting rid of the fraction, which is great. Here we need to distribute the 9. So we get 9x plus 54 equals x minus 2. And to finish up the algebra to solve this here, we're going to subtract x from both sides. We're also going to subtract 54 from both sides. I'm going to do both those steps at once. And we get 8x equals negative 56. And divide by 8, we get x equals negative 7. So at this point, we have to ask ourselves, is this an answer that makes sense with our original equation? Because sometimes you can get logarith logarithmic expressions that really don't have a solution, and where the, the solution you come up with algebraically doesn't make sense if you plug it back into the original. So we need to test these solutions. So let's test x equals negative 7 by putting negative 7 in for x. If I do that here, I'm going to get negative 1 up here, the log base 3 of negative 1. And in here, um, negative 7 minus 2 is going to be negative 9. And at that point, we can stop. Because this is saying, the log base 3 of negative 1, it's saying that um, you can raise 3 to some power and get a negative 1. And that's just not true. There's no power you can raise 3 to to get any negative number. So this negative 1 doesn't make sense here. This negative 9 doesn't make sense here. So this does not work. And in fact, this has no solution. So if you test your solution and you find out it gives you a negative value that you're trying to take the log of, you can say that this has no solution. All right, let's try the next one. I'm going to clear off some space here. In this one, uh, let's see. We can get the, the logs all on one side of the equation by adding the log base 5 of x plus 2 to both sides. So I'll add it here. I'll also add it here. That is going to give me a sum of logs, which is great. So we've got the log base 5 of x plus 2 plus the log base 5 of x plus 6. And that equals 1. So that's just after adding log base 5 of x plus 2 to both sides. Now, a sum of logs can be written as the log of their product. Whoops. Get rid of that. 
So let's go ahead and write it like that. This is going to be the log base 5 of x plus 2 times x plus 6. Same thing. That all equals 1. At this point, uh, I think it's good to rewrite this as a, an equation so to get rid of the log, right? write this in exponential form. What this is saying is that the base of 5 raised to the first power equals this stuff here. So 5 to the first power equals x plus 2 times x plus 6. And what you can see probably is that we're going to have a quadratic equation here once we FOIL this out. And hopefully it'll be something we can easily factor, or if we have to, we'll use the quadratic formula and see if we can get some solutions here. Let's go ahead and FOIL this out. x times x is x squared. And x times 6 is 6x. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 6 is 12. And this equals 5. So let's set the quadratic equal to 0 by subtracting 5 from both sides. And we'll combine our like terms while we're at it. And we get 0 equals x squared plus 8x plus 7. And luckily, that's easy to factor, right? Um, everything's positive, And 7 times 1 is 7 and adds up to 8. So we get x plus 1 and x plus 7. These are factors of a quadratic. So we set each one equal to 0 and solve for x. We're going to get negative 1 and negative 7. So those are our possible solutions. We need to test these and see if they work in the original. So let's try our negative 1. If I put a negative 1 in here, I'm going to get a 5 inside these parentheses. If I put a negative 1 in here, I'm going to get a positive 1. And I've got no problem taking the log base 5 of a positive 5 or log base 5 of a 1. I mean, what, what this part is saying is 5 to what power gives you the number 1? Well, that's 0. So this whole chunk is 0. This one says 5 to what power gives you 5? Well, that's 1. So this is 1, this whole chunk. So 1 equals 1 minus 0. That checks out. So 1 is definitely a solution. Let's. Um, uh, put in the negative 7 here and see what happens. So if I put in negative 7, I get, let me erase some of these numbers here, I get a negative 1 here. And right away I can tell we're in trouble. And we're going to have a, a negative 5 over here when we do that. Um, and we're, we're trying to take the log of a negative number, which just doesn't work. You're saying, what power can I raise 5 to to get a negative 1? There is no power to raise 5, 2 to get a negative 1. So our only solution that makes sense here is negative 1. And negative 7 is not a solution. So that is how to solve logarithmic equations where you have logs on both sides.